Hey kids, guess what? Yeah, you got it in one. It's time for another edition of Love to Hate. I'm Philip Fullman. And I am Brandon Luna. How you been, buddy? I've been excellent, man. <laughs> it's been like a week. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't throw me off this time. The intro went uh, way lighter there. That's right. That's right. We're having some cigars while we do this. Hopefully you guys are uh, sitting back, comfortable, maybe enjoying a favorite beverage, yeah, a cup of coffee, you know, not watching a movie while we're on. That would be, you know, multitasking. We want, we, you know, full attention because if you're not careful, you might learn something before we're done. Right, right, You remember right. who said that? No. Bill Cosby. Oh, yeah? Beginning of the Fat Albert Show. Okay. And if you're not careful, you may learn something before it's done. <laughs> he didn't learn stuff. <laughs> no, apparently not. He, he uh, um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know what gets me about this whole thing is I fucking love Bill Cosby himself. It is one of the best stand-ups I've ever seen. And I, every time I see it, I crack up. Oh, yeah. I don't. It's like I know what's coming. And and I can tell people like shh, shh listen to this part for people who'd never seen it you got to see this you got to see this watch this part and and I still crack up but I can't enjoy it now because when I do all I'm sitting here thinking about is God damn it man come on seriously it's that's like, rough man yeah that's it a rough is one. and it, you know I you, I don't want to go the other route and be like come on Bill you're Bill Cosby you know you don't need drugs you got you got power. You know, right. you could seduce them. And I get it. It wasn't about the sex. It was about the control part of it. Right. But I would think by saying, I'm Bill Cosby, bitch, um, that's a power thing. Right. But but clearly, this was the way he wanted to go about it. But now I, it's hard for me to look at him and go, God, man, I can't laugh at the dentist joke because all I can think about is you're a creepy human being. <laughs> and it sucks. Yeah, there's a lot of celebrity scandal that's really messed up a lot of people's uh, careers over the years. Bill Cosby is a big one. Oh, um, yeah. Tom Cruise, another big one with the whole uh, jumping on the couch, uh, freaky he Scientology rebounded. thing. He rebounded with Mission Impossible, but I mean, right. everybody looked at him like... He's nuts. And in that Scientology video that leaked out. Oh, yeah. It's just, and you know, when you're driving by an accident and you see, you know, people injured, you know, you're the only one who can help. Right, right. Like, I'm sure the paramedics can't do shit, but right. you can come by and do Just his, uh, his, his, his maniac laugh that he has, like, throughout that, when he's not it saying is... anything funny, is really scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really scary. It, 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 that is the creepy cult laugh. Right, right. Uh, that totally. people get. He drinks the Kool-Aid, yeah. Oh, he totally does. Uh, and, I mean, that's the thing, though, is, like, uh, my wife to this day cannot, she hates Tom Cruise. She's never. Right. She was a fan back in the eighties when everybody else was a fan. On the when top girls her age, and, all right, love right, Tom yeah, Cruise. Yeah, but I mean, I think she always kind of knew something was off with him because she stopped being a fan probably around the Mission Impossible time. Sure. Uh, and then he went nuts so and did all this weird stuff. But right. she still can't to this day separate the man from the art. And uh, I think a lot of people it's have that tough. issue. I, I definitely do. I think social media has a lot to do with that. In that, uh, you know, if you look back in the day to scandal in the past. A lot of that stuff was brushed under the carpet like it was no big oh, deal. Oh, yeah. It, um, you never found out that your favorite celebrity was a misogynist, a drug addict, uh, whatever. Right, molested young um, children, whatever. It was right, always you know, brushed and back under. then, you, and, uh, to be fair, to an extent, uh, uh, in current times, uh, you know, finding out an actor's gay. Back then, it was a kiss of death. Now, it's like, okay, you know, they're gay, nobody cares, but I can understand... You know, if your image is built in a certain way, like you feel like, well, I'm an action hero or I'm perceived as this, it could hurt my box office if I come out. But it certainly wouldn't be that, oh, my God, what a, you know, you can never act again. I don't right. think that would happen. Whereas back in the day, that would have just been. Yeah. Uh, would have you know. destroyed your career. Yeah, absolutely. Rock Hudson had come out early in his career. He probably wouldn't have had the career oh, he had. No, no, because yeah. it would have been hard to, you know, oh, he's a romantic lead. Yeah. Um, Matt Balmer on. Uh, um, what was it? Suits. Right. Or it wasn't Suits. He did uh, White Collar. Yep. Um, he's an American Horror Story, too, but that, like, everybody well, and, but gay, it, but so. he's, you know, he's not one of those actors where I'm just sitting there the whole time going, yeah, but he's gay. It's like, I, it just, it didn't, it didn't cross my mind. It was just, I was watching him act, so it wasn't. 
something like, well, this is unbelievable. But I, I think nowadays we've become a lot more accepting of that. Sure. Because as a culture, we've become a lot more accepting of the LGBTQ XYZ right. community. I don't. There's so many letters now. There I are. There is a ton of letters. And I don't want to offend anybody by that, but I don't know. I don't remember. Because Brandon, so. like me, we, <clears throat> we don't care. And by saying we don't care, it doesn't mean we don't care about you. We're just saying... You know, viva la difference. Yeah, right. So I think we're very accepting of that nowadays, and that's and that's fine. Right. Um, but we're accepting to a point. If they're going to come out as gay and then they've molested someone that's underage... Well, now you're a dick. Yeah, exactly. It's... Kevin Spacey. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. that's the thing. It's like everybody's pretty much assumed Kevin Spacey's gay. It's like, hey, man, God bless. That makes you happy to be gay. And right. It's like, whoa, 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 wait. You did what? Exactly. Oh, you were yeah. being creepy? Oh yeah. fuck you, dude! Come on, and and that's that's the thing we can't stand is, oh, you're a bad human being, mm-hmm. and that's hard to get over. And and my number one is Mel Gibson. Okay, I loved the original Lethal Weapon. I didn't watch the crappy Lethal Weapon Four with Chris Rock. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to watch The Patriot, as historically inaccurate as that was. Used to watch it on the Fourth of July because it made me a little swell of pride when I saw that American flag. Right. Um, you know, I I enjoyed uh, what women want just for the aspect of him dancing around the apartment to Sinatra. But now it's just like, oh, you, fuck you, dude, fuck you. Don't tell me, you know. Don't yeah. don't don't do that. I, I remember what Gilbert Godfrey said. He said he was listening to the whole rant. And he's like, and I'm going, uh-huh, uh-huh. Whoa, 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 wait, back up. What do you say about Jews? And it was kind of... <laughs> <laughs> because you hear these things, and you're like, wow, wow. Then when he gets to you, you're like, oh, wait, hold on. Say that, what was that? Right, sugar tits is fine, but wait, yeah. what did you say? Yeah. And, and I mean, when you realize how off the rails he is, and I don't doubt that his views are... I, I think he did a good job of hiding them for years, but he went off the rails when he got back on the booze. Right. Because he right. was sober for many years, and you can see why he should not drink. Right. Um, I'm not saying he's not an asshole. He is. But when he drinks, it, then it's just there's no filter. He can't hide who he is. Right. And, and I mean, so it, there was, it's taken me away from it. There are stories before that ever happened that his father was a Nazi sympathizer mm-hmm. and all this stuff. But it never came out that he was that until right. this particular situation. Not that he's a Nazi sympathizer, but obviously he has a certain view of the Jewish community that's sure. not that's frowned upon. We'll say that. So. Um, I have a distinct uh, ability to separate art from the person, and I, I still will watch a Mel Gibson movie. I'll right. still even watch new ones if they sound interesting to me. I'll still, I'm still going to watch uh, Bill Cosby. You himself watched Daddy's because Home I, too, didn't you? <laughs> no, I did not see that. But you know, I know I still think there's there's value in what they did produce, and that's sure. part of our history. Yes, they become an asshole since then, but I think also that's you know there's some part of that that. Uh, is going to get probably swiped under the carpet at some point historically. Who knows? I don't know. You know, and 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 test of time is what happens. So, well, I mean, how many people sit there and are like, I can't watch Captain Blood or Robin Hood because Errol Flynn slept with an underage girl. I mean, you don't even think about it, right? And that was and that was acceptable back then. I, mean, I think we talked about this previously. You know, the guy uh, was it a uh, one of the guys from Led Zeppelin was dating a fourteen year old girl for right. two years. You know, that's you know back then it was just it was like, is, is it good? No, but. Eh. You know, all right, we're going to give him a pass. Right. And you can't do that now. Certain people um, get a pass. Other people don't. Prime example, you know, no one said anything about uh, the rock stars that were dating underage girls. Sure. And how many rock songs are about underage girls. Right. Completely acceptable. Roman Polanski, on the other hand, who's kind of a creepy guy to begin with, right. who's a movie director, doesn't get a free pass. And he's living in France now because if he comes back, he's going to get arrested. So, right. it, it, you know, again, we get into the Me Too movement. And uh, there's a level of that that is uh, pass or fail, I think, based on attraction. Um, you know, How something. So? so, like, okay, if uh, Harvey Weinstein says you got to sleep with me to do this movie, right? There's a chance that's going to come out that the guy's a creep because he's Harvey Weinstein. Sure. Brad Pitt says you got to sleep with me to do this movie. You might okay. sleep with Brad Pitt and be okay with it, and probably never say anything. Maybe even brag about it because it's Brad Pitt versus Harvey, Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein. You know, there's there's a okay. there's a level there that I think people don't really think about that. Uh, and you don't. Do you think it's possible that you don't? It doesn't seem as creepy because it's coming from an attractive dude, and it's like, hey, you know, attractive right, dude, right. kind of or attractive woman, yeah, because that's happened too. You got uh, Aja Argento that was, you know, yeah, she was doing underage of, guys, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. How old was he? Sixteen, something like that. I don't know. Yeah. I, Which to him, it's like he's a superhero. You know, he's—I don't know—he's the one who's, who 
brought this whole lawsuit and stuff. Yeah, that's true. So apparently he he did not have that attitude. Yeah. That's a weird Whereas I, I think there is that. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's there is that attitude that most guys would be like, all right, right. Apparently he he did not have that attitude. Um, I don't know that I would be turning her in for that if I was sixteen. Right. I she's mean, not. so hey, yeah. look at sixteen. I don't know about you know most guys, but I think if you're honest. Mm. Until you actually have sex, there is that point in your life where you're like, am I ever going to have sex in my life? <laughs> Until you do, and then you're like, okay, so I will. All right, that's good. Now, right. now I want to try to do that again. Um, so for yeah, you, though, you can't, I mean, for you, Bill Cosby, uh, Mel Gibson, they're off, they're off limits now. It's Mel Gibson, definitely. Okay. Hard pass, but again, that affects me. Right. Um, Cosby, Cosby's, yeah, that one's tougher, because it, I look at it's it's one of those things where you're still making me laugh, or I would still laugh, but I just feel like, oh man, I just I know what type of person you are now, and that that completely takes me out of it. Right. You know, do I still eat at Subway? Yes. Am ah, I ashamed of that? Jared, yes. Not yeah. not because of Jared, but just because I am actually eating at Subway. Right. Um, but we love them if they'd sponsor us. Um, <laughs> hey, I work for Chuck. Right. They kept right. Chuck on the air. Yeah. Um, but it, he wasn't the owner of the franchise or whatever. He was the spokesman. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, you know, a little bit more of a disconnect there. Right. But, I mean, how many people were shocked when all that came out? And that, pretty much, if you're going to screw your career, be a pedophile. Right. Because there's, there's that's, you're not coming back from that one. Yeah. Um, you did drugs, you know. You Robert hit Downey somebody. Jr. Yeah. How many times has that guy had a career? Exactly. And yeah. but but once once you cross that line into you're abusing kids and rightfully so your right. career's over yeah totally, totally. Um, deservedly so yeah without doubt I remember uh, uh, one of the latest iterations of uh, uh, Adam Sandler's Hanukkah song uh, is his name in celebrities Jared Fogel God damn it <laughs> and it was just like, <laughs> like like yeah yeah is that um, on the Netflix thing you did uh, it may be yeah it may be. Um, but yeah, you know, you, you feel that it just like, I think any time, you know, there's somebody like if it, it was somebody in the cigar industry did something, you'd be like, God damn it. Come on. You right. know, don't, don't turn the eyes towards us where they're going. Oh, so people in the cigar, like, no, 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 no. Let's, 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 you know, keep some, uh, perspective on this. But uh, so what is this trick of yours that you're able to separate the two? Um, I've got no moral center, I guess. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I, just, I just, I don't know. I just can't. I mean, to me, um, if they're entertaining me, I'm, I'm okay with being entertained. I, I don't really, I don't really look at the politics and, uh, the, uh, who they are as a person when I'm trying to watch. Because it's the particular... escapism and that's not who they yeah, are. Yeah, exactly. You know, that, that's what it is for me. I think social media makes that a little bit harder now because the stories don't die. Uh, they tend to go on forever. Well, because they put themselves out there as people, not right. as the actor, but like, hey, look, here's me shopping at a grocery store. Here's my thoughts on this or that. Right. And I can interact with fans. There's been a bunch of them, though. I mean, uh, especially on the child molestation side of things, right. which is awful. Jeffrey Jones, you know, Beetlejuice. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, Amadeus, all these things. Uh, arrested for child content and solicitation of a minor. Ouch. So, big one there. Um uh, what Mark Salling from Glee? From Glee, yeah, he ended, ended up, up co- committing suicide because of that, right? Big one there. Uh, who was the guy? I will never think of his name. If you pull this off without without IMDb, I will mm-hmm. be impressed. Okay. Uh, the principal in uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's the guy, Jeffrey Jones. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. that was the one. Yeah, uh, don't I look stupid? That's okay. Yeah, you didn't know who he was. I, I get it. I knew him as the principal from. Uh, from uh, Ferris Bueller. Yep. I call all actors by their role when I uh, which when I see ironically them on the screen, I'm like, enough, hey, die hard. Ironically enough, that scene in that movie is really creepy now. So <laughs> that's how it <laughs> is in their, their family. family. Like, ouch! <laughs> like, wow. Which one of these do I want to smoke next? Um, oh, it's up to you. You like the Inejo or uh, the? I like them both, but I'm just thinking. I did, this was really tasty. I all right, it. I'm gonna go with this. Thanks, and, buddy. And a lot of people have, you know, a lot of guys too have done uh, their worst to to make themselves uh, put themselves in a hard spot. By just, you know, opening like Mel Gibson mouth. opening their mouths. Uh, Michael Richards, the racist uh, rant that he did and, uh, you know during was, that show. I, I, okay, I say more awkward. I, I don't mean to. That's not as an excuse. More awkward 
the Jerry Seinfeld going on Letterman, can Michael come on and apologize right now thing that they did. That was just painfully awkward. Like, yeah, you know, he's a buddy of mine. And mm -hmm. they let him come on. And then he Michael Richards apologizes just like, oh, that's not weird at all that Jerry's saving your ass. Right, right. It was, it was just a bizarre, bizarre moment. And being that I've been in a live studio audience before and I know what it's actually like when they record those and how fake it is. I kind of wonder how many people actually booed him when that happened. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah, because you can edit the hell out of that. Yeah, totally, totally. Just like this show. Exactly. Uh, Jennifer Grey messed up her career with the nose job, which is odd because I think, you know, she just totally changed her face. Oh, she doesn't... Uh, she doesn't even look... How many actresses, though, ruin their career with their face? Yeah. By doing that. Meg Ryan, to a degree, oh, looks God. completely different now. She used to be so now. cute. Amanda Bynes, who was a uh, big deal on Disney... She had her she had her own show at some point or something, and mm -hmm. she got uh, DUIs and hit and runs and all kinds of stuff that happened. So her career went down the toilet. A lot of Disney stars do that uh, to themselves. Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan's another big one. Yeah, um, drugs, alcohol, DUI, all these things. Wouldn't Shia LaBeouf? Yep, he was also a Disney guy. He also messed up his career pretty good, and uh, he's trying to make a comeback and doing more small independent films and stuff. But you know, still basically a douchebag. So people kind of stopped going to his movies. Uh, Hulk Hogan. Complete racist, apparently. Yeah. And showed off his racist side, and that got him in some trouble. Also showed off his backside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, apparently. Gilbert Godfrey. Uh, insensitive he, tweets. Yeah. Yep. I, I remember those. And uh, that was in that was part of a documentary, uh, Can We Take a Joke? And we talk about, you know, should comedians apologize for jokes and explain, look, this is, you know, it's humor. You know, right. We're, it's meant to be this way. Uh you're supposed to get so, a pass with that stuff, but I think in today's you environment, don't, you don't. But yeah. you don't. Um, and, the, and the difference, I think, you know, obviously Richard Pryor used the same words, uh, Michael Richards, and other comedians have, but they weren't in anger at the audience. Right, You know, right. it was part of the setup, uh, but uh, it wasn't just that, you know, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to call you an epithet because you're pissing me off. Right. How um, many people have destroyed their careers over being a racist? Let's see, Paula Dean. Is a big one. Um, you know, my favorite, her, my my uh, my favorite defense of hers was when she was talking about her producer, her friend, and she goes, "And he's just a big old black boy over here." And I've known him like, oh, you know, <laughs> I don't. It's like you understand that doesn't work. You can't say, "Well, no, I've got a black friend, so I can say that." I guarantee any of my black buddies. Right. Would be like, no, just because we're <laughs> friends. You don't get to say that. Right, right, And, and right. so her falling back on that, but it's, it's like, I can't be racist. I'm friends with one of them. <laughs> and I don't, see, I don't see how people feel like that's okay. Like, no, no, that's not. Right. Um, this is an interesting one that I didn't know about because I don't really know who this person is other than she was a reality star and I knew she was a model. Mm -hmm. Tila Tequila. Um, was she an MTV person? Yeah, or she was an MTV was personality. She a singer? Uh, no, she wasn't a singer. She just was had, she just a whore? Basically, yeah. Okay. You know, she was one of those people that was on all the celebrity shows that really wasn't a celebrity. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Now this is interesting. Um, she basically thinks Hitler's pretty awesome. <laughs> if you're gonna spit your coffee out, sorry. <laughs> Picked the wrong time to drink coffee. No. I'm sorry. She what? Yeah. No stranger to saying controversial things. This is from the uh, the site called The Richest. Uh, most notably, however, was the one thing that really really hammered at home uh, that ended her career came in 2013 when she decided that Hitler was a cool guy to praise, including in her rant um, that was titled "Why I Sympathize with Hitler Part One." This is a quote. She published this. Yes. I learned the truth about the war and what Hitler truly did, and he was not a bad person, as bad a person as they have painted him out to be. Here is a man who was not a coward, stood up for his country in a time of desperate need, unlike our other cowardly leaders. She also decided that posting photos of her scantily clad in front of Auschwitz oh. was a super appropriate thing to do. Fuck her. Last but not least, she took to Twitter in 2016 and posted a picture of herself saluting like a Nazi. Understandably, her account was suspended, and she was kicked off the Celebrity Big Brother after one episode because of the pro-Hitler stance. And there's the picture. How lovely. Tila Jesus. Tequila. What a scumbag C-word. What? Okay, she said she read the history. Who fucking wrote the history book? <laughs> you got me. 
Uh, Mel Gibson, I think, wrote that he book. Ran, was, yeah, is, is told by. Uh, wow. Wow. You know, I know, I know she's not listening, uh, and I'm going to assume, I know if you listen to this podcast, you're smarter than this, but i um, pretty sure putting a, you know, putting yourself in a situation where you commit suicide because you're afraid of uh, getting captured by the... Uh, by the allies, that pretty much makes you a fucking coward. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. That kind of settles God it right there. Bless. And then, of course, Jared Fogel. That's the number one on this list. Uh, yeah. God damn, man, pedophile. Um, yeah, I, I I saw some of the 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 things they said. You know, some of the emails. It was like, hold the phone, dude. It was. It was. The. I'm trying to think of how to say it. I can't say the problem with because it's all wrong and fucked up. Right. But you're also not talking about a guy who's like, hey, I kind of uh, like looking at high school cheerleaders. No, no, it wasn't high school cheerleaders. It was he, he had an age demographic that just beyond disgusting. Yeah. I, I didn't. I don't. Remember. It's all disgusting. But I, I never got you know. into the story because that stuff eeks me out. So I didn't really get into the details of it. You know, the, you he, know. he was dealing with with prepubescent kids. Uh, Stephen Collins is another big one from Seventh Heaven, a yeah. religious show. Yeah, and then he goes and comes out for child abuse and uh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, he was in Star Trek: The Motion Picture. Come on, man, what are you doing? I know. Just god damn it! What the hell's wrong with these people? So there's a lot of these uh, Beecher, people who have destroyed their yeah. Blame V'ger. That was a shitty movie. So Yeah, it was. Star Trek The Motion Picture was awful. The, probably the worst. Well, not the worst. One of the worst Star Trek movies ever. I would agree. Um, Jeffrey Tambor. Yeah. From uh, Arrested Development. Mm-hmm. Sexual harassment. Um, While doing a show about LGBT stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That's yeah, um, kind of bad. Al Franken. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the Me Too movement which, caught a lot it did of, uh, and, and it, in its web you know and i'm all for for that i i just got to say i i think allegation enough you got to prove the allegation right just because anybody can make an allegation definitely prove the allegation and fuck these people they lose their career matt lauer mm-hmm. charlie rose louis ck yeah and and you know he Aziz to Ansari, the extent that, can, that also, yeah. yeah to the extent that that you can he 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 was the one person. To him going, yeah, I'm a perv. I did it. I right. totally did. I'm sick. You know what? I'm going away for a while. Right. Um, and I think people respected that because he wasn't like, well, this was all misunderstood. I mean, yeah, he had you know, been, I he had was been just, fault and, and you know, I was just being friendly. Right. Uh, no, it was misinterpreted. <laughs> like, no, Be, being friendly with his cock in his hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just and I, you know, and I think. I think there is that tactile sensation when you can tell that a cock's hey, in your hand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I think that's that's the case. There's that tactile uh, sensation of uh, you know when it, when somebody comes by and they're like, "Oh, hey, how are you?" and they put maybe an arm on the shoulder or something like that, and you know how it's meant. And then other people maybe can tell when it's like, "Oh, hey, how are you?" And it's like that wasn't, uh, yeah, that felt weird. That was that touchy. was yeah. yeah. It's like that was a different touch, right? Right. Um, so I think people can pick up on the uh, the differences. Definitely, yeah. Um, who's the uh, was it Terry Crews, the big uh, the big dude from uh, uh, Brooklyn Nine yeah. Nine, right, right? And all of that. Did he get he, something? He got a accu- no. He accused a, a, a producer. Oh yeah, at a party and sued the guy. Really? Because he went over and he grabbed him a fistful of Terry Crews. Oh wow! And you know, wasn't a now Terry Crews is not a guy that I would. I would not molest Terry Crews. No, no he would I would punch you in the stomach. Yeah, he, and, Terry Crews could pretty much snap you. Yeah, exactly. Um, but he didn't. He was there with his wife and and was cool about it and was kind of like push the dude away, like uh, uh-uh, don't. Right. But he he filed a suit and he's been very uh, supportive of this. Right. Um, and you don't think about stuff like that. So we haven't really touched on the Me Too movement. Um, but no, I think it's something because we'll... we've been avoiding it because <laughs> but, we're, we're, we're cautious about how we word stuff. Right, right. I do want to say, though, that I think um, while it is necessary and I think it's a, a good thing that it happened and we're seeing probably some changes in Hollywood because of it, you got to know that Hollywood started 
on the casting couch. I mean, sure. we've known about the casting couch since the glory days of Hollywood. This is They've just always people finally saying, saying, hey, by the way, this happened. Right. But right. it's been going on. Nobody's surprised by it. But people are finally coming out and saying, hey, this is, this is what this person did. Right. And it amazes me that it took that long. Sure. I mean, the movie industry is how, how old is the movie industry? Know, 100 years the, old? 200 years old? Something like that? I don't know. No, it started like the, in the 30s. Okay, so, yeah, it's, it's old, right? Uh, yeah. But finally it happens? I mean, come yeah. on. I mean, why, why did, why did this take so long? Because you have to believe it's been going on since the early... Well, look at the, uh, look at the Corys. Uh, Corey Feldman and Corey Haim. Uh, Corey Feldman, I don't, I don't think he's actually named anybody yet. Maybe he has. But he said, you know, that's why Corey Haim ended up committing suicide. Because when they were little, little kids... There was some creepy dude like, hey, you know, going to make you famous. By right. the way, this is this is how I'm going to make you famous. Right. So uh, they've been abusing, you know, kids uh, for just for ages and not just physically. I mean, you know, they got Judy Garland addicted to drugs. Right. Yeah. So true. true. Uh, it, it's something that goes on. And, and it, I guess I don't know. They see people as disposable. Right. Maybe to some extent your worth is what you can bring to the box office and beyond that you have no worth to me right which you know that that rubs me the wrong way I mean, disposable people yeah pretty much and you know we joke about it a little bit on this show you know when we talk about hey what happened to that guy's career or whatnot and it's like well you know what man to be it, it makes for a funny joke maybe but at the end of the day it's like you know maybe other people maybe they don't have to do that their entire life they don't have to act their entire life they can go on and do other things and be happy Right, um, and and maybe they just want to jump off that uh, that ride because they see how it just it just crushes people, and um, and this is I mean there is definitely some people that have some Teflon uh, where yeah. things have happened and it's kind of slid off of them. Uh, Rob Lowe's a big one. He had the sex tape, yeah, and that kind of just now he's Rob Lowe and he's doing all kinds of television. He's yeah. a busy guy. Uh, Paul Rubens to a degree. Sure. I mean, he even came out and said something that what. Well, he, he remember he came out like years later and said like oh, I've heard any good jokes lately. What was that on? Was that Saturday Night Live or something? It may have been, yeah. Yeah, but I mean it's Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant, yeah. And I Eddie mean Murphy. You know, I'm not a Leno guy, mm -hmm. but by God, that was ballsy and beautiful the way he started that interview. Do you remember what he did? Because no, Hugh Grant, I don't. No. So it was the week. I guess Hugh Grant got busted the week before. Mm -hmm. And he was scheduled to be on The Tonight Show the following week or later in that week. And so he comes out, sits down, and Leno just looks at me and goes, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> and it was like, that is so perfect. And right. Grant just rolled with it and just like, you know, made a mistake. And, right. uh, and his career rebounded because he didn't, I, it wasn't, I, it was entrapment. It was this. I was drugged. Uh, it was a setup. It was, it was like, look. I'm a guy, I did something stupid, I mm. own up to it, I admit it. And people were like, you know what, okay, I get that, I've done stupid stuff. I'm right. not famous, but I've done stupid stuff, I get it, okay, I'll forgive him. Right. Um, and I think that's why people have so much trouble with Pete Rose. Right. And um, Lance Armstrong. Because here's a guy who not only denied it, but took people to court and made them spend money on attorney's fees, money they didn't have because they didn't have his endorsements for libel, slander, what have you, saying they're bad-mouthing me, only later to go, oh, yeah, I, I actually did do the blood doping. It's like, you know what? Fuck you. You took right, these guys right. to court, and you knew you did it. That, to me, is when it becomes unforgivable. That's that's when you're a shitty person, yeah. Yeah, uh, and, you know, Pete Rose, it's... Uh, you know, he didn't really hurt anybody with it, but it was the whole idea of, like, just fucking say you did it. Right, right. Just go, yeah, okay, yeah, I gambled on baseball. How different would the OJ trial be if he just said, yeah, okay, I did it? That's a big one, OJ. Yeah. Still to this day, people think he's innocent, people think he's guilty. It's 50 50 on that. I, I, I still go guilty. I think um, it's, uh, there's probably more of a 70 were you the 30 one, thing. Were now. you the one telling me you heard a plausible alternative story to that? Was it you or no, something? No, it wasn't me. That uh, the whole thing was he was actually covering for his son. And oh, really? the reason that he was covering for the son was because he knew the DNA had matched. Nah, that's interesting. I yeah. hadn't heard that. I hadn't heard but that. But that it was apparently the son had, had issues. With I still think it was OJ, but that's the only thing I've ever heard where it's like, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, his he, he's done. Yeah. 
And uh, he needs to go away. He refuses to go away, but he needs to. And uh, how weird is it now if you're watching Naked Gun? Yeah, and it's Norbert a little, comes in, and you're kind of like, "Oh, weird. holy shit!" It's right. It's yeah, it's a little, it's a little odd. Yeah, that one I think is a little harder for me to take. Um, I don't know. It's, it's just because you know. liked him so much. No, not even that. Just because it's you know he, he didn't do a whole lot entertainment wise. He wasn't in very many movies, mm-hmm. and it's kind of a shock to see him in movies when you see him in movies. And now you see him and you're like, "That fucking guy." I don't know. It just when it when it really uh, kind of shocks me is. When when you all see something on you know retrospectives on running backs or great NFL players, and it's like even when he became an actor it, or just became famous or a celebrity, forgetting man he really was one of the greatest running backs ever that the league had. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like man, you totally forget that now. It's like yeah, I, I totally forgotten about it because now all I'm thinking of is the white Bronco and the glove that doesn't fit. Right, right. So here's another one that, okay, let me ask you if you think this is Teflon or if you think he was really affected by it. Big one, Michael Jackson. Teflon. Teflon. Yeah, kind yeah. of slid off of him. Yeah. Yeah, it totally did. He uh, he went to court, but nothing happened. Right. The undisclosed payment, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Right. But he didn't do time. No, And it did. didn't hurt his album sales, and it sure as hell didn't hurt, you know, the way people remembered him when he died. Yeah, true. Uh, he, yeah, you don't even hear that brought up with the memory of Michael Jackson of like, by the way, he slept with kids and he really, I, he's weird to me because it's, when you hear him, it's like, you, you don't understand why this is bad. You don't, you don't get this. Right. Right. Uh, it's almost like, is he, is he, what's he missing? Right. Um, I think there's a bigger story there, and I think we've never uh, seen it, uh, about how he grew up maybe, and how oh, his family yeah. treated him and how he really didn't have a childhood and everything that goes along with it. That mm-hmm. kind of You can see why he was a big kid because he never had a childhood, so he right. became a kid later in life. And maybe he was really just one of these guys who liked to hang out with kids and have a good time. And he kept saying it was all innocent. It was right. innocent. And it's maybe like, it was, but enough people or maybe came out thought, against him. You know, that, it's, and I wonder, it's like, did you think that was okay because you weren't being mean? Right. It's like, that's still wrong. He's yeah. still a kid. It's like, do you not comprehend that is, is the thing I wonder. Right. But. But you're it, still assuming it, the thing happened. I am. Okay. I am. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm definitely Pretty sure it happened. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, you don't hear anybody talk about it. Yeah. And I think, didn't Macaulay Culkin's parents or didn't he get money? I believe to so, not yeah. ever mention that again. Right. So, um, yeah, definitely Teflon. Yeah. There's a couple of them out there. But for the most part, I mean, now I think you don't get along. You don't get away with that stuff nowadays. I think it's, uh, I think there's definitely more accountability. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's a big part of what the Me- how the Me Too movement was very successful was now there's accountability in Hollywood. And there never has been for yeah, all these years. I mean, really, who's your HR department? Right, right. Uh, you know, you do that in a corporate setting, then obviously there's a chain of command. But you'll even hear stories now where the dude in the HR department's kind of like, eh, play it off. It's like, what? Because it's the good old boy system. Right, right. Um, and there's a lot of those things when I read them. I'm like, how did you... It's like, did you think that was smooth? Did you? Do you have you ever gotten any action with that line? Has anybody ever just swooned when you've said that? Because that... <laughs> right. That's incredibly crass and just stupid. I can't imagine any woman has ever just looked at you and gone, oh, well, thank you. Like, no. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I guess they keep trying it. But to me, that would be a scary thing if there was nobody, if I didn't think there was anybody I could go to who could make it right. Because it's like, man, I, you know, I got this career here. I like it. The handbook says that if I go to HR and say this, they'll make it right. But if I got some jerk in HR, you know, who's buddies with this guy or they golf, then, you know, is he really going to look out for my best interest? Right, right. Um, yeah, that, that to me would be issue. very right. scary because, you know, that's why those balances are in place. Um, but, yeah, in Hollywood or in just entertainment, where is that? Especially when it's the idea of, uh, to some extent, people are exploited. They're exploiting your talents, but definitely women exploited for their bodies their looks 
So it becomes that fine line of, was somebody harassing you or were they just saying, no, no, the role calls for TNA, so you got to get naked because the role calls for you to run through the woods naked while you're being chased by, I don't know, what chases people in the woods? Who does that? Jason? Not Jason. Okay, Michael, Jason. Whatever, yeah. We need to do a horror episode. Well, yeah. Sure. Um, you can educate me. <laughs> there you go. Um, but, I mean, so there's that line there. Right. Of like, well, that was the job. But just because that's the job doesn't mean then you can go grope somebody freely. Right. But then it, then it gets wonky to me. L- look at, look at uh, the history of Hollywood, though, and the, the level of misogyny that is prevalent through the history of Hollywood, mm-hmm. even in media. I mean, if you look at shows now like Friends, like uh, Mad About You, um, other shows like that from the 70s and 80s and stuff, uh, Archie Bunker, so much misogynistic dialogue in there, um, even given to female characters. Even Mad About You? Yeah. I mean, there's just a lot of it. Um, Ira was a completely oh, misogynistic yeah, Ira. asshole. Yeah. Until they, they softened him as the show progressed. But He was... <sighs> That's the thing. If you're just a horn dog, does that make you a misogynist? Eh. I mean, if you're a horn dog and you're just chasing skirts, but you like the skirts and you're nice to the skirts and whatnot, does that make you a misogynist? Were Lenny and Squiggy misogynists or were they just idiots? No, they were idiots. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to view them through that. Was the Fonz? <sighs> to me, no. I don't see him that way. I see him as... Because I never saw him as this, no, you're going to fucking kiss me now. No, you can't go home. Or you know what? You're stupid because you're a girl. You know, or, or that he had different opinions or, or, or those type of opinions about women. Right. Um, uh, what radio show was I just listening to? Um, Danny DeVito and Taxi. No. It, he it, yeah. Was just a <laughs> but, but, I mean, one of the lines was... The driver almost hit him, and they're like, did you see who was driving? They're like, what? It was, it was a woman. And I was like, okay, wow, so you're saying, you're saying women can't drive. And that was, to me, that's a misogynistic attitude. Right. The chase in the skirts thing, it's like that's kind of a guy thing, and, I, and I, it can be disrespectful, but at the same time, I, I think it's, it's a perfectly healthy male thing to go out and when you're young pursue women, but don't be a jerk to them. You know, and if she's not interested, like, all right, move on. Right. But, but I don't know. To me, misogyny is more of, I see women as less Lesser, than. right. And I guess what the, the Me Too and the feminist movement is saying, women are seen as things and not people. Right. And, and so I, I get that. But I don't know that these characters actually just saw women as objects. Maybe okay. I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but again, I'm coming at it from a male point of view. Yeah, fair point. Yeah. So, um, I know I watched. Uh, I was telling you. I think I told you this. You know, I just binge watched all of Magnum. So, episode where he meets up with Michelle, his wife that he thought was dead. She's now married to another dude, but they're back at Tom's house because he's trying to keep her safe, and uh, he's just gotten out of the shower, and she's she's in his room, and and you know the lighting's just perfect, and. Uh, he leans in close, starts to undo her hair, and she's like, Thomas, no. And he doesn't stop. And he undoes the rest of her hair on the other side, lets it drop. And she's like, Thomas, we can't. He doesn't stop. He leans in for the kiss. She doesn't fight the kiss. She's totally in there for the kiss. And then she kind of pulls away a little bit with her cheek next to his and says, you know, we, we, we shouldn't or we can't. And then he just picks her up and puts her on the bed and that's the end of it there's no real fighting you know she doesn't she's not struggling she's not screaming but that would be seen through today's lens as assault because she said no twice right but i'm seeing that mental thing in the head where it's no i know this is this that we shouldn't but I really want this because, you know, in her case, she was in love with him. And secondly, it's Tom Selleck. Um, So, you know, putty. So, I don't know. I I don't view that as anything. I don't view it as he assaulted her or anything like that. Um, It was actually a very tender moment on the show. But again, through today's lens, he, he would be 
you know, uh, by some considered to have assaulted her. Right. But in reading her body language and, and her ver- the way she said it, she was not offended. She was not upset. Right. So there's, again, the male point of view versus the female point of view. Also, is there a different point of view for older females versus younger females? Probably written by a man, though. Let's be honest. So Let's find out. Yeah. That's why, that's here's why a, here's a list. This is on Bustle.com. Bustle. 17 most toxic male characters from television. Wow. Okay. Okay. So we have number one, Michael Scott from The Office. Uh, bluntly sexist, homophobic, and racist. And, uh, you know, it's basically a joke on the show. There's plenty of scenes of Michael Scott that are basically painful to watch. Ross Geller from Friends. Um, you know, plays it plays it as a sweetheart, but uh, progressively, you know, doesn't uh, accept the fact that his son likes playing with Barbies. Uh, when Rachel hires a man to watch his daughter, um, he has a problem with that. Um, basically couldn't accept that a job could be done by anybody but a woman. Uh, Ted Mosby from How I Met Your Mother. Uh, that guy's a misogynistic asshole on that show, for sure. Never watched it. Yep. Uh, let's see here. President Fitzgerald Grant from Scandal. Never watched that show, so I couldn't tell you what that's from. Kilgrave from Jessica Jones. You watched that, the Jessica Jones, the bad guy yeah, from Jessica oh, Jones. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I mean, he's supposed to be, right? So, that's fine. Um, not going to say that one, because I don't watch that show. Jim Halpert from The Office is also listed as toxic. Uh, yeah. Toby from This Is Us. Never saw that show, so couldn't say anything about that. Steve Toby from what? From This Is Us. Really? Yeah. He's listed as a toxic character. Toxic is in misogynistic or just he has issues? Um, let's see here. It says he's devoted to Kate and knew just how to help her get through her miscarriage. But in the first season, Toby was a clingy boyfriend who didn't seem to respect Kate's wishes. He wouldn't take no for an answer about the Super Bowl, instead creating an elaborate fake party and causing her to tell him about her late dad before she was ready. He also didn't respect her relationship with her twin, Kevin, at first, saying he was competing with him for Kate's attention. So just a toxic character in general, basically, it just, is what they're saying. I, the word toxic is incredibly yeah. strong. He's a jerk. We'll say he's a jerk. How's that? I, you know, a little needy. He didn't... Yeah, I, I wouldn't give him the word toxic. I wouldn't even call him a jerk. He was just a guy... Who, he liked her. He didn't know how to, you know, look, I'm jealous that you spend more time with your brother. And I say it, it's like, come on. You know, it's like, there's no need for that. But toxic, that's that's huge. Don Draper from Mad Men. Or Don Draper, I guess. Oh, yeah. Don Draper yeah, from Mad Men. Yeah. misogynistic. I can Definitely. See that. But that's that's played in that time period. Sure. It's, you know, it's supposed to be, right? So there's a lot of them on here that I don't know about. But, yeah, oh. I mean, I think we've had a history of that. And I think we're still going to get a history of that. I think as long as... Uh, as long as most of the stuff is written by men, you're going to have a level of misogyny in there. That, that um, Magnum episode written by, by men. Yeah. They had so. some female writers on there, so I just I thought I'd double check. Right. But yes, you were correct. I, I think so, and I think uh, there's a definite... How do I put this? Send your cards and letters. Um, <laughs> there's no, definitely... just in my writing group, women write differently from men. They yeah. tell the story differently. They, they see it through a different lens and they explain the story differently. Not saying it's a bad way. I'm just saying it's a different way. Um, Prime example, um, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Written by a woman, directed by a woman. And, and a great, you know, I say great. It was a good movie. Right. Up till the third act. Um, because that's where like it started to drag. Right, yeah, yeah. That yeah. had nothing to do with the CGI you know, nightmare that is DC. produced by Zack Snyder. Yeah. Zack Snyder. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, it's a different form of storytelling, but, um, I think women can definitely write good male characters. Mm-hmm. I, a number of the Rockford Files episodes, I don't remember the woman's name, but but uh, woman writer, uh, Juanita Brown, I think. Okay. I, I'm not going to wiki that, but Brian I think McGee, that was her. Fact check that for There you go. Um, fact, fact check that. Thanks, McGee. <laughs> uh, it's two weeks in a row now. Um, but, you know, definitely able to write a, a strong male character with Rockford. But it's just it's seen through a different lens and just, you know, different angles on the story that a male would miss because of, you know, just our differences. Right. Not saying one's better or the other. It's just different ways of telling a story. Yep. Nora, and, Nora Ephron, I think a very, a yeah. very good uh, female writer that wrote male characters. When Harry Met Sally is one of my all-time oh, favorites. Yeah. I mean, tell me she didn't nail 
the, just the Billy Crystal character. Oh, yeah, perfectly. totally. She, totally. Yeah. A guy could have, you wouldn't know that it was, well, a woman wrote him. Like, no, that's, she nailed it. Yeah. With it. I, and I don't know, I don't know if it's easier. I would think it's easier for women to write male characters than men to write female characters. Well, yeah. I think that's definitely um, true. I think that's one, definitely One, because true. we just don't understand. We, no, we, we don't. We try. God knows we try, but Men we are just from don't. Mars, women are from Venus, that whole thing. Yeah. 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 We Very just walk true. around like, I don't know. What did I do? Right. Cats I always said dogs, I was going to write a Cats book that dogs. it was called, uh, Because I'm Not Psychic, I'm Alone Now. And the first <laughs> chapter would be, I shouldn't have to tell you. You should already know. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, man, I don't know. I mean, I think we have a long way to go before um, women really have a place in Hollywood where they feel comfortable. Sure. Um, I think, you know, we're looking at probably a couple of generations, maybe eh, a good 15, 20 years before they're really, they have a voice. And I think part of that is, you know, not having scripts where it's like, when she gets topless. Right. Or where it's like, we got to throw in the random naked chick. Right. Um, You know, where it's like, okay, is that necessary? Is it critical to the story? Right. Does it push the story forward? Yeah. Right. Or is it just like, hey, we got boobs in here, so come see it, kids. Right. What kills me, though, is that um, as advanced as we become and as, as, as we've moved and progressed as a human society, um, there's still news stories like, oh, finally the first female director won an Oscar. It's like, you know, why does it have to be a female director won? It's just, you know, Catherine Bigelow won an Oscar for The Hurt Locker. Right. That's great. You know, it doesn't, it's not a big news story that it was a female that won. Oh, it, but it is because that's, that's still something that like, oh, this, there's a and special you, girl do, that did do something. You, yeah. Do you find there's still times when you hear stuff like that? The first female who, the first uh, black person who. Right. And you're like, really? It's like right. that hadn't happened already? I know. It's like I would have thought, it's like, seriously, nobody before you? Like, huh. Right. Because I find that where it's, I, I'm, I would think. Yeah, no, just, that had to have happened already. Fabric, yeah, just yeah. And just then you taken realize by like, the fact that that's something that hasn't happened already. Yeah, totally. yeah. Which and that that does take me back because I I do I think well, how come it didn't? Yeah, you know, and like you said, it can be that power system, the good old boys club, which you hear a lot in sales. Right. Uh, you know, and it's a boys club, and um, and that makes it tough because I I do know a lot of women, and it's like man, they can contribute. In, in business or they can contribute in the company but guys don't want them a part of it because it's like well you're going to kind of mess up our little thing and it's like you know this is work right you know nobody's saying you got to invite her to you know your Saturday afternoon pickup game but you should have a voice in the job exactly and I would like to think that we're at a point regardless of color or, or gender where people could go who is the most qualified? Can this person do it? Then I'll go with them. I don't care who they are or what they look like or who they love or what their religion is. They're the most qualified. Right. Because that benefits the company. It benefits the whatever that you would do that, but people don't do that. They're like, I'll go with somebody less qualified because, I don't know, they look like me. That's, that's in a society where affirmative action isn't a thing, though. You know? Affirmative action shouldn't be a thing. Again, it should be based on who's the most qualified to get into that college, who's the most qualified to get that job. But we're still at that point societally. Is that a word? Societally? I believe so. That we have to have these, these things that allow for these people to Because advance. people still won't. Right. They're still going to hold those things against people. Right. Because we don't see everybody as, I won't even say as equal, because we're not all equal. Because I know there are a lot of women out there smarter than me. Yeah. So, in that way, we're not equal, but we're both people. Yeah. And that's the thing. Uh, not necessarily seeing everybody as equal, but seeing them as a human being with something to offer and not just writing them off because, like, oh, well, uses the other bathroom, so can't be as smart. Like, no, that's, that's not the case. How much, do you think there's a, a fragile ego on, a, on, on the part of a lot of people? Oh, yeah, definitely. Because definitely. of that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean that's that's a big part of it. I think misogyny is is born from ignorance and uh, ego. I mean that's really where it is. That's where it lives. I think you know. Right. That's in my opinion. I mean, because you're you're a... no, I would. It has definitely comes from ignorance because yeah. you look at history and and it's like history is going to tell you you're wrong uh, in in so many ways when you right. look at you know 
women leaders, um, even the, uh, God, what were they just talking about here in the state of Texas? The women's air, it wasn't wax, maybe it was, but it was basically the, the women pilots mm-hmm. um, that, that flew over here because the men were over fighting and flying in World War II, so there were no male pilots here, so the women were the pilots. Right. And they were debating, well, should we actually teach that in education that, that you know, they, they did this? Should we actually award them medals? And I think it was during the Obama administration, maybe? Mm-hmm. Maybe it was during the Bush, Bush administration, where it was, no, they'll be recognized. They can be buried, you know, in a military cemetery because they served and, and they were active duty and they were, you know, in service to their country and they were a pilot. Right. So, yes, they can get military. But before that, it's like, well, they weren't really. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so right there you have it. All these things like, well, women can't. Like, no, bullshit. It was the 40s. They were flying planes. Yep. They were playing so, baseball. League of absolutely. Their own. <laughs> you know. And, and people, it's like history right there should tell any misogynist, like, actually, you know, can do pretty much anything a guy can do. Obviously, there's going to be some physical things like, you know, if a guy's taller, he can reach the something on the shelf mm-hmm. that maybe, you know, somebody else can't. But you know, stuff like that. But intellectually, anything along those lines and even physically to the point of, you know, being able to go out and get some of the jobs guys have. That's that's something they can do. But people tend to say no. Right. Or view it that way. And the same for people of. uh um uh, uh, of other races, you know, yeah. uh, you're not a sports guy, so you're not familiar with the whole black quarterback thing, are you? No. Uh, there was always the uh, this perception that uh, black athletes were not smart enough to be Ouch. quarterbacks. Yeah. Ouch. Speedy can run, can catch a ball, but didn't have quite what it took to be a quarterback. Wow. When was this? <sighs> well, uh... <laughs> Actually, a couple of months ago, there was a... <laughs> Ouch. No, I kid you not. There was a Texas... Uh, God, what did he do? He taught in a public school in Texas. It was like in Rusty Spur, Texas or something. No excuse, but, you know, obviously some small hick town. Right. And uh, uh, someplace... Uh, suburbs of Houston, because he was a Houston Texans fan, and uh, their quarterback is black. And, uh, I don't know, pulled a boner at the end of the game, lost the game for him, didn't manage the clock, whatever. Mm-hmm. And he made, he, again, one of those, well, I thought I was sending a a personal message. I didn't know I tweeted it. Right. Um, about, that just goes to show, when the game's on the line, you don't want the hands in, uh, the ball in the hands of a black quarterback. Ooh. They just don't have what it takes. Ouch. Yeah. yeah. Ouch. And it's like, so the black quarterbacks who've won Super Bowls and <laughs> playoff right. games, what are you going to do with that? Um, Damn. And it's like, come on. It's still it's still out yeah, there. Yeah, and and I I mean but that was the thing, you know, they taught that was the thing in the 70s. Right. You'd hear guys go, "Well, you know, they can't really uh it's like oh, it's horse shit." Yeah. You know. Um if anything, if there's a reason somebody's not smart enough to be a quarterback, it's probably because they were passed all the way through high school just cuz they could play sports and were never getting a proper education. And that's white, black, whatever. Um so there are those stupid attitudes that uh, that people have, and so even to this day, you know, here's a guy who still has that uh, that thought process, and uh, refuses to just again see people as people and realize, you know what, there are stupid white people, there are stupid black people, there are stupid Jewish people, there are stupid people across the board. There's stupid men, there's stupid women, but it has nothing to do with any of those things. It has to do with that individual. Right. And That's you can't all it has to stupid. do. You can't. Yep. And, and, you know, they want to sit there. And I remember, um, and I hope I get this right, it was in the, the speech, and I think I've referenced this before, um, former President Bush, W, um, gave when the Dallas cops, uh, the six cop was at five or six. I apologize. That's actually something I should know. But when they were ambushed downtown. Right, right. right. And he was, doing, he was speaking at the funeral. And in the eulogy, he said, too often we judge entire groups by their worst example while judging ourselves by our best intentions. 
Mm. And I thought, man, that is true. Right. Because we'll find one person be like, see, that's how those people are. It's yeah. like, no, no, no. That's how that one, one fucked up dude is. Right. Don't you dare say everybody, you know, who looks like them, worships like them, loves like them, is like that. It's that one fucked up individual. And invariably, they always end up on television. <laughs> <laughs> They always get interviewed for something, you know, unfortunately. I mean, it's crazy to me that... Well, because they make great sound bites. Right, right. You know, it's like, seek them out. It's it's crazy to me, though, that you had... Okay, Irving Berlin, Mm -hmm. in 1946, wrote a song, Anything You Can Do, I Can Do Better, Mm -hmm. for the uh, Broadway musical Annie Get Your Gun, which was all about men and women, if you can Mm -hmm. do it, I can do it better. We're still up against that, even in... 2018 Mm -hmm. and we still haven't come up with a solution for it it's amazing to me it's amazing to me that we haven't progressed since then even though we knew it back then you know i mean it's crazy because i don't know man i I go back to that insecurity but then it it, it's so what are you afraid of If, if so what if a woman's a better shot than you that means what you're in fear or you feel in fear. She's not making you feel inferior. There's something inside of you that makes you feel inferior. But, right. you know, what what is that? What is it in your past or what you heard that you carry forward that makes it just impossible to admit mm. something like that? Right. Um, and you always got that one guy, that gets, like I said, that gets on television that's like, oh, but you're going back to the old, you know, caveman days when we were the hunter-gatherers and they were just making... Uh, like, yeah, but you're, are you really a caveman? Are you really going to compare yourself to a caveman? Right. I mean, let's, let's not do that now. Let's get that out of there. I mean, well, we've grown yeah, past and, that, and, I think. And the idea of, like, well, that's how it's supposed to be. According to who? Right. You know, why? Why, why was it supposed to be like that? I mean, you want to you wanna see a woman kick some ass? Threaten her baby. Right. Watch that happen. She'll whoop your ass in a heartbeat. Yep. Um, Ripley. Nothing. Aliens. Yeah. <laughs> you don't fuck with that maternal instinct, man. Right. Um, I, it, like you, it boggles me to the point of why, why do you have to think or why do you think that admitting these things makes you less? And right. It, and it has to come from something inside of that person. Yeah. Um, it's ego, man. It's I don't big. know. I mean, <laughs> you know, the weird thing is I, I have to look at that and then go, huh, maybe I have a better sense of self-esteem than I thought because I'm not threatened by stuff like that. Right. I can easily admit there are people, women, men, black, white, whatever, who are better at a lot of things than I will ever be. And that's okay because there's things I can do better than them. Right. And I think it all boils down to let's just try and be the best people we can be. And if yeah. everybody worried about that, you'd be in a hell of a lot better spot. Right. right? You know, worry about yourself mm-hmm. and just leave everybody else alone. Don't compare yourself. Right. It's not necessary. Be the best person you can be. Surround yourself with people you love. And you'll probably have a pretty damn good life. Yeah, right? there's, a, there's, a, there's a meme I have in it that I love. And it's Charlton Heston as Moses. And he's holding the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. And one side says, be cool. The other says, don't be an asshole. Yep. I'm like... There you have it. Ten Commandments summed up in four words. Yep. I thought you were going to say words. one said, be cool, and the other one said, pry it out of my cold, dead hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, now that we've top- tackled this, I guess we should talk about the NRA next or gun control. Or... <laughs> no? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> that might be yeah. something. Well, uh, we've got a bunch of gun friends that are kind of nutty. We can have them on the show. Let's, get John uh, Oliver on here. Well, why don't we stick to just entertainment and stuff that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Something you and I are definitely more versed in. Kenny, Kenny's also a big gun guy. Kenny yeah. is. Yeah. Kenny Wan. He uh, he is definitely into that. He's he's pro hunting. Right, right. And uh, he's very much the outdoorsman. Very much so. Yeah. Perfect example. Kenny Wan, younger mm-hmm. than me, right? Asian, and and better at hunting. He could be better at, at fishing. fishing, being outside, being in the woods, right? Than me. And yet, I don't sit there and think, "Well, I'm I'm intimidated by this." Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm the big strapping, you know, white guy. Like, no, no, I'm horrible outside. Right. I've never killed anything in my life. That... About the only part I think of is I want to live closer to him when shit hits the fan. That's basically. Oh no, I've know? already talked to Kenny, and I've told him it's like when shit hits the fan, I'm going to his compound. Right. Because right. it sounds like a compound. It's like, no, I'm going in there, and I'll be like, "What do you want me to do, dude? 
Right. You know, it's like, you want me to cook the food you've killed or just whatever, just <laughs> keep the zombies away. Exactly. That's, that's what I, I want Kenny to do. I, I, he's a great guy. Well, so again, but we went off topic. <laughs> we started with the, what, with the me celebrity. Too. Yeah, yeah, we started we with did. the celebrity so, scandals and then ended and up then with And then we just uh, went into just society. But that's what we do, and we like to think that's why you guys, uh, uh, I almost said kids, why yeah. you kids uh, join in. You know, somebody asked me, why do you say that? Why do you always say, hey, kids, or mm-hmm. whatnot? And I was worried that it sounds like derogatory or condescending, which I don't mean it to. And I was trying to figure out, why the hell do I say that? And I was watching something, and somebody played a clip of Letterman. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, kids. And I was like, son of a bitch. That's where I got it from, was Letterman. (laughs) So that is why I do say, hey, kids. I do not mean it's condescending. It's just kind of my little... Right. Take way and intro and stuff. So, I think that uh, happens when you do these things. Like when I did the Eclipso Cigar Review, I'd start the show with hello, 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 everybody. And I don't know yeah. where that came from or why I did it. I just did it until yeah. I didn't even know I really did it until uh-huh. we had some other guys on from a different podcast. And he, uh, I was on his podcast and he's like, hey, first I want to say, Brandon, hello, hello. I'm like, ah, oh, you son of a bitch. Because so, I didn't, oh, there you go. You know, I just realized I did it at that point. You quit but, saying huzzah. No, yeah, huzzah. That, that, yeah. that, that used <laughs> that was to be the thing. thing. Yeah. yeah, huzzah. But uh, anyway. We're going to wrap this up if, uh, in the meantime, hey, if there's ever been a time you wanted to write to the podcast, my <laughs> guess is it's after this show. So uh, where would they do that? Well, you can go on the uh, Twitter sphere and contact us at Love to Hate Pod. You can also go on Instagram now and also at Love to Hate Pod. Uh, we post in there pictures from the shows we're doing, kind of a you know little way to, for you to find out ahead of time what we're going to be talking about, so check that out. And you can also go to Facebook and like us on Facebook and comment there as well. And don't forget to go to iTunes and give us those reviews. And as, uh, as uh, part of having Instagram, mm-hmm. we, we had to set up an email. Oh, okay. So we now have an email. You can hit us at love to hate pod at gmail.com. All right. And right now we're, we're just getting spam, although... <laughs> just getting spam. <laughs> no, this guy says... Uh, Seems legit. I just have to give him my social security number. He's going to put money in my bank. So Sweet. Yeah, I know. Hello, sponsorship. We'll talk to you <laughs> later, kids. <laughs>